What is going on? Welcome back. Unless you're new, then just welcome. welcome. <laughs> so today we are continuing the installation of our SBAR D5E hydronic system in the van. As if, you, if you've watched our previous videos, we've installed the heater underneath and all the accompanying parts under there. As well as in another video, we covered installing the internal components, the exchangers, the tank, and our blower on the inside. Today we are tackling what has probably been the hardest part of this for us, and that's the wiring. So, <laughs> yeah, so keep in mind, we got our kit from Heatso. Um, we have tried to contact them for about how long now? It was like a week and a half. We've, we've called them, left messages, we sent emails, messages through their website. Finally, we got a hold of someone through their instant chat and they were able to answer some questions for us. Now, we don't want to go bashing heat or anything because we think this is probably largely related to the pandemic. I'm sure that they're not as staffed as well and things like that because they're in lockdown in the UK, which is where they're located. Um, so with that being said, we've had some difficulties. We don't know if we would suggest using them, but we want to be fair too and say that there is a pandemic going on and that could be the the cost. We did get a lot of information off of SprinterSource.com. We are going to leave a link down there. If you are building a Sprinter, it's a wealth of knowledge from people who have built out Sprinters, anything from, hey, I want a new steering wheel to, hey, I want to put a entire new hydronic system in your van. It's, it's a really good resource. So that was very helpful as well as the information we got from Hiso. So what we did find is there aren't a lot of videos out there that talk about the wiring and depending on what system you get and who you get it from, your wiring may be a little bit different, but we thought we would go through the entire wiring harness for you. It's not gonna take that long, but go through that for you so you can maybe understand a little bit better where things are getting connected to if you are using this or a similar kit for an RV. And then after that, make sure you stay around because we're going to put some glycol in this baby and fire her up. <laughs> we really hope it works. <laughs> so we have downloaded every manual we could find on the installation of this thing. This is actually the schematic for the wiring harness. And you can see all my little notes on there that I was making as I was trying to chase every single wire in it. Um, but we're hopefully going to make it a little bit easier for you. So when you get the wiring harness it's a big bundle of stuff and it really kind of branches off into three different sections or at least ours does the first one has these two connections which are very obvious these get connected into the heater underneath the van and then the third thing on it is this one here with two green wires this is for the diesel pump to pump um, fuel into the heater so that um, it will work there is a little connector all we have to do is plug these pins into that and then this is going to connect to that pump so first part very easy to understand okay the next section of the wiring you have this little fuse holder here that comes out and then this little black thing here this from what I've um, read is uh, just a little device that SBAR can hook up to it and diagnose problems using a, a tool that they have so those really you just have to kind of hang away they have a little clip here that you can mount them on and then just kind of mount it in your under your hood of the van in your electrical box wherever you need to mount this to make the wiring work for you so it can be inside or outside um, and then the other two wires on it are one this brown one this is a ground wire here in the u.s we generally use black for ground in 12 volt systems but they use brown in Europe, I guess. So this is your ground wire that's going to go to your ground of your battery. And then this is, um, at first it was kind of covered and I thought this was a black wire, so I was really confused as to what it is. But if you look up here, it, there are three red wires coming off of it that they've merged into one. This is your power wire. This one here is what's going to get hooked up to the positive side of your battery. So just hang these away. And these are your positive and negative connections to your battery. If you're from Europe, what color do you guys use for a ground in in Europe? I'm, I am curious. I think it's brown. Well, I mean, Esbar, Germany. Brown. <laughs> well, if you're from Germany, then absolutely leave a comment <laughs> I, I below. I think generally all over. 
Okay, so the third section of the wiring, there are a bunch of little cables and stuff. So there is one that has a little four pin connector on it, which has a red wire, a brown wire, a blue and black wire, and a blue and red wire going into it. This connects to the Easy Start Pro controller for the system, and it's just gonna go into the one little four pin here. And then you have these three cables or wires, sorry. Um, there is a yellow one, a red one, and a brown one. This is for an Easy Start remote. If you do not have an Easy Start remote, which we do not, these are just gonna be capped off and tucked away. They are not used, so you can just kind of cap them off roll them up and tie them in the corner somewhere. And then the last little part of this section has a big red and white wire and a black and red wire. So the white and red wire are not going to be used in our application. So this is used if you're hooking up to a blower in the vehicle. We are hooking up our system, our, our calorie blower separately, so it's not going to be there. You have to go through a relay when you use that in the actual, the vehicle blower. So this also, this little thing here that's got this little black box on it that a relay attaches to, we are not going to use. This is just a spare part, not going in the van. And since this red and white wire would hook to that if we were using it, this is now just going to be again capped and tucked away. We are not using it. Now we have seen some people use it to power other things like the blower. We are not knowledgeable enough for that, so we're not going to do that. So we're capping the red and white and tucking it away as well. Now the black and red wire, you have the option to use it or not to use it. So if you decide not to use it, you can just cap it off and tuck it away. We are going to use it. And where it's going to go is there is, and I'll have Jed get a shot of this for you. There is a four pin connector that hooks to your power voltage monitor of your Webasto controller. So you can actually replace this on pin one of that instead of the positive wire, you would have this pin, pin one sensor wire that you can hook there and that would actually tie it into your heater system a little bit better. And what um, the heat so instructions say is this will keep the system, your blower from turning on before the system is heated and ready, thus preventing it from blowing out cold air when you don't want cold air being blown out. It will not turn on until it is up to temperature by doing that. So we think that's a good benefit. Last wire in the installation kit here is also very obvious. It's got two connectors on each end. Um, this connects your pump for your hydronic fluid to the heater. So be, these are both plug and play, one to the hydronic pump, one to the heater, um, easy breezy. Okay, so hopefully that helps a little bit understand all the parts of the wiring harness. Um, the other problem that we are having is with how to hook up the Calori blower to the power voltage monitor. And from our understanding is it's very simple. You're going to hook the positive of the um, PVM to the positive of the motor, negative of the PVM to the negative of the motor. It's that simple. Our confusion was is we have a wiring harness back there and it's as simple as going to the black or the orange. So, And yet another perfectly good hole and a perfectly good van. So this is our calorie heater and this was one of the biggest questions we had concerning the wiring. The calorie actually, this connector here used to be attached to all these wires down here and there was no other connector to connect anything to so we weren't really sure how to hook it up. The instructions we got were to basically to remove the end of this connector and then we can just hook our positive and negative directly up to the other wires so that's what we're doing. Um, it's got four wires. It's got a yellow wire, a red wire, an orange wire, and a black wire. We've capped off the yellow and the red wire. The orange wire is the one that is going to the positive um, main terminal of the motor, and the black is going to the negative terminal of the motor. So those are the ones we are going to hook up to, and hopefully it's right. All right, so this little guy here is the PVM. This actually came with the Webasto controller for the Calori. And so this little thing sits on the Calori um, blower and we have to actually hook it up to it. So this is where we are going to hook those positive and negative wires from that wiring harness on the Calori. So this is going to attach over here and then we're gonna run our red to our orange because that's gonna be our positive and our black to our black. And then we'll talk about this side when we get there. All right, so our hole here that we cut in the floor, we have ran our um, 
portion of our wiring that needs to go under the van down. That's the um, connectors that need to go into the back of the heater and the um, wire that needs to go out to the diesel fuel pump. Included in the HeatSo kit are these little Molex connectors that you have to crimp on the wire. That is a massive pain. We have these special crimpers that supposedly help, but they're, they're not much help. So uh, we managed to get them on. I, I'm pretty sure you probably could do a better job with a pair of needle nose pliers. Just be careful, they're super tiny. We had one more Molex connector than we needed. And uh, trust me, we, we needed it. <laughs> So we probably needed more than that. <laughs> probably. So on this one, these are pretty simple. These are just spade connectors and they, they clipped in fairly easily. Now we actually, for this signal wire, we stepped down from, what gauge was this? 14? 16, 16 to 18 so it would fit the pin. Yeah, 16 down to 18 so it would fit. But moral of the story, it's a big pin. Yeah, and so what these are is that one with the black end on it that hooks into the power voltage monitor that goes to the Calori blower, and the white one hooks into the back of the Webasto um, controller that controls the Calori. Okay, we've shut the power off, and Sandy is tying it into our electrical system. How are you feeling about this, Sandy? I'm really nervous about the electrical portion of this. I mean, I wasn't this nervous about doing the major electrical in here. I think it's just because we had a really hard time finding all the information on it. But I'm going to be a little nervous to power this one up. So now it's time to fill the system with our fancy 100%, actually it's 99.9% .9 pure propylene glycol. It is um, food grade, non-GMO, kosher, halal, vegan. So you can eat it if you want. I wouldn't suggest it. I don't think it would make you feel necessarily good. Keep it away from your cats though. You can't put it in cat food. Yeah, yeah on the back it says not for use with cat food. I don't know what the deal with that is, but please don't feed this to your cats. Okay, we're gonna start pouring it in. I have a bunch of rags here just in case. And that's um. why we have rags. Okay, so the first gallon of glycol is in. I'm not seeing anything in the tank yet. Jet is going underneath to check out everything and make sure that we don't have any leak there because everything seems to be going in the low point of the system right now. And we did, the reason we kind of weren't filming this is right here there is a vent near the, um, the hole where you put the glycol in. And as we're pouring it in, it's coming out the vent. We plan on getting a, a hose to put there with a little expansion tank just in case it overflows. Um, but right now, as we're putting it in, we're having to kind of plug this hole with our finger to make sure it goes to the right place. Okay, so we're underneath the van taking a look here. Doesn't look like anything is leaking. Going over here to the pump. I can't tell whether there's actually glycol in these or not. But so far, it's looking good. We have powered on the system. Yep, the van's back on. So this is just, we're putting in the date and all that kind of stuff today. What does it say, Friday? Friday. Oh, Celsius, Fahrenheit, because <laughs> you know, we're Americans. Indicator sensor. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know, if do you know what they want here? Okay, so we've turned it on. This is actually our second time. We didn't get it the first time, but this is the second time that we're getting a fuel supply or pump um, error kind of thing. So we're not sure what's going on. We don't know if we heard the pump clicking, so it sounds like it's working. Um, I just don't know if, you know, we have about, what do we have about 15 feet of fuel, yeah. fuel line for it to go through. So I just don't know if it just hasn't made it back to the heater yet. Um, what do we do? <laughs> hey Sandy, what's that sound? It's a heater. Is it putting out heat? Yes. Holy cow. The system is on. Just slow down. Slow down. 
we got to tell you about everything that happened. So when we were working, it's actually the next day now. And last night when we were filling it up with glycol, after we put the glycol in, we realized that you have to mix it. We did. I, I don't even know if we really want to tell you this. <laughs> we didn't mix our glycol. We just dumped straight honey glycol into the system. Yeah. So we Not had good. to, yeah, we had to drain the entire system, which wasn't a big deal. I just cracked a little point and drained it out. Yeah, we, we realized it pretty much immediately, and we just, but still, probably never a good thing. So we uh, we went with a, we mixed it 60-40, 60% water, 40% yeah. glycol. Distilled water. Distilled, Distilled water. water, yeah, get that. Yeah, so... In it, the process of that, we got several errors several times. We kept getting a, an error basically saying that the, the the temperature at the input of the heater um, was was t too different from the one on the other side. Other side. So basically, it was get. I think it was getting so hot that it was overheating. And what we think happened is we had some airs in the line. So we just decided to give up on it last airs, night. Plural. Airs in the line <laughs> so we last night we decided to give up and we just went to bed and then we got up this morning fresh and renewed so we came back out here again yeah i i broke the lines burped the system um and we ran it a couple times we drove around the block to try to shake the air out that was the trick yeah yeah so that's that's what did it for did. us yeah so after driving around it kind of burped all that air out of the system and we fired it back up after we got from driving it around and we do have a small leak. We do. Um, I think it looks like only one, and it's right over here on one of the heat exchangers. So we should be able to just tighten down that fitting. But everything else seems fine. We're not seeing any leaks from anything else at this point. So. Yeah, I already checked under the van and everything. It looks good. Yeah. The heater works. The chlory blower. Yeah. Oh, I don't, know. I don't think you can hear that. It just bubbled and made funny noises. It does that. Okay, so these are the controls for our um, Chlory blower, and then this is for the SBAR heater. So we wired it to where our blower will only work if the heater or the SBAR um, heater is on. That way it never kind of blows any cold air out into the van. So this is a little guy how we turn on the heater and then the blower. So let's turn on the heater. Nice hot air. Feels good. And just in case you were curious to see how loud it is on the outside, it's not really that loud. That is without a doubt the hardest thing we've installed in this van so far. Yes. It took us a lot of research and it's not even the the hands-on work really wasn't that long. It was all the research that we had to do. Yeah, so like actually install once we figured out where we could install it into the van, that went quickly. The inside portions, once we figured out where we were gonna put everything, went quickly. The wiring, not so quick. <laughs> Lots of back and forth um a lot of information off of SprinterSource.com. We are going to leave the link down below. We're not sponsored by them or anything, but if you are build, building a Sprinter van, it's... A wealth of knowledge. Hydronic systems, anything in your van. Just yeah, tons of knowledge. Kudos to anybody on that forum that answered our questions. Yeah. Speaking of questions, if you have any about our install, leave them down below and we'll try to explain to the best of our knowledge. Yeah, so I, like some of the video may not have been the best at showing you... Because what happens is when we get really frustrated with something, we forget to film. <laughs> yeah, we we get we get like laser focused on solving the problem, and the camera just kind of sits there. Yeah. So hopefully you found this useful, especially if you have the wiring harness. Maybe that made things a little more clear for you. Um, like we said, if you have specific questions and we can help, we're more than happy to do that. Um, I don't know how helpful we'll be. Like, yeah, give it a I, shot. I think I got a lot of gray hair from this. All right, guys. Hopefully, you did find this video useful. If but you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you like, like the channel, subscribe. Yeah, like, subscribe, all that other happy jazz yeah. that we do on here on YouTube. But uh, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. And until next time, stay wonderful. Call it a day.